this week in the Monday Night War. On Raw, we got The Undertaker versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's right, Harlem. And on Nitro, we're supposed to have a regular show, but a regular show turns into a, a horrific accident backstage. What went wrong? Romeo, SP3, Harlem World. This is True Rewind 70, paid for by the New World Order. This is True Rewind. This is True Rewind. This is True Re- Rewind. This is True Re- Rewind. This is True Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. We are back once again on the Fightful Overbooked YouTube channel. Jump into DeLorean, pump up the flux capacitor as we go back in time to 1996 and review the Monday Night Wars between WWF Raw and WCW Nitro on another edition of True Rewind, episode 70 paid for by the new world order i am back once again with the face and the ace of the true hill heat youtube channel the pilot and driver of the delorean himself mr romeo anthony clone what is up everyone thank you all for joining us let's we might as well address the elephant in the room uh the sad sad news of scott hall and what's going on with that thoughts and prayers to his family and friends uh, we can't avoid it. We're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about Kevin Nash. We're going to talk about all that in this episode. Um, yeah, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers for sure to uh, Scott Hall, who is uh, currently on life support after having three heart attacks uh, with a hip replacement surgery that uh, basically they caught a blood clot and he was he had three heart attacks. He was on life support. It was announced earlier today by Kevin Nash that uh, they are going to be taking him off of the life support. So you've been seeing a lot of tributes, a lot of thoughts and uh, uh, prayers to Scott Hall and his family, but a lot of memories of his illustrious career which we have uh you know covered already during our ride in the monday night wars during his the end of his run in wwf and now we are experiencing the beginning of his run in wcw a man that will definitely neither one of us would probably be here on the fightful overbook youtube channel talking about uh july 29th 1996 between wcw nitro and wwf raw if it wasn't for for scott hall he's one of my favorite wrestlers when i was growing up someone who embodies swag and cool so i'm happy that we can think about him and think about the good times and the good memories because he has allowed us a lot of them throughout our lifetime correct we are gonna look back on these memories fondly and uh as we go along here we continue the true rewind journey Absolutely. And if you are coming along the journey with us, remember to help out this video. It helps us out so, so much. All you got to do is something that's completely free. Drop a thumbs up on the video. Share it with your friends. Subscribe if you are new to the Fightful Overbook YouTube channel. And if you're watching us live during the premiere, let us know in the live chat your favorite memory of Scott Hall, your favorite moment of Scott Hall, whether it be in WCW, whether it be in WWF, all the other places around the world. I, I saw a very cool story about him picking a young Japanese boy, a uh, young boy in 2001 during his trip in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And he decided to reinvent the one, two, three kid upset loss with this young boy. Do you know what that young boy's name happened to be, Romeo? No, inform me. Hiroshi Tadahashi. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Scott Go, saw, hey. saw something in Hiroshi Tanahashi 20 years ago, told everybody backstage he's going to be one of the biggest stars yet. And yes, Scott Hall was correct in doing so. So let us know your favorite Scott Hall memory in the live chat. If you're watching us on demand, let us know in the comments down below. We are here to celebrate Scott Hall as uh, we talk about July 29th, 1996 on WCW Nitro and WWF Raw. But Romeo, you are the pilot, the driver of DeLorean. 
We mm-hmm. got a backseat driver because, you know, uh, drunk guy JJ is still lost in time. He's still hanging out with Hugh Hefner in 1986 at the Playboy Mansion uh, with the Playmates. So we had a backseat driver here, Miss Romy, Miss uh, Harlem Rain. Say hi to everybody. Or, we got the car seat. Flight Strap in the car seat. Overbook. Strap in the car seat. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. You got to get in the car seat. Yes, you got to get in the car seat. But yes, Romeo, <laughs> while, she, while she taunts all of you, uh, take it away and let's get to July 29th. Let's start with Nitro uh, in Orlando again, of course. We see some poorly lit footage from WCW Saturday Night of the Outsiders. Jumping Sting in the parking lot after Lex went to go take a phone call very suspicious very fishy of lex luger if you ask me i mean it's lex luger i mean lex luger <laughs> is like the worst friend we have established this throughout the monday night wars then we have mike enos versus hacksaw jim duggan and you already know it's a hacksaw jim duggan match one of the worst baby faces of all time pulls out the tape fists and wins by cheating right in front of the referee I, that's that's my thing. Like I'm like the referee. You gotta love how the referee sees this going on after the match and doesn't even think anything of it. Like he, they at least like tried to play it off like he didn't see it actually happening during the match. But Hacksaw has a full hand of tape as he raises his hand after the match. <laughs> that is the perfect time to reverse the decision, referee. Afterwards, Hacksaw actually cuts what I thought was a spectacular babyface promo, calling out Hulkster for his betrayal in a very heartbreaking way. Uh, Mentions how Hulk was over his house and his kids loved him. Uh, I could have done without the part where he calls Hulk a great technical wrestler. But hey, can't all be great. He wants to beat Hulk Hogan up. What'd you think of the promo? I I liked it. He talked about Hogan holding both of his kids, which... I, I think it's a shoot because we hear all the time about, you know, Hacksaw Jim Duggan being very close to Hulk Hogan. Uh, he also talks about his oldest first word was hoaxster, which, <laughs> I mean, I would be kind of offended if uh, <laughs> Romeo came over in Harlem and Sydney's first word was Romeo. I mean, <laughs> that's just going to put that out there, uh, Duggan. But uh, Duggan, Duggan makes it clear he wants to fight uh, Hogan. And spoiler alert, I don't even think they ever had a match. <laughs> Hey, Glacier, coming soon. Moving on, six-man tag, a uh, reiteration of what we had last week, but this time Ric Flair's here. Flair, Mongo, Benoit versus Luger, Sting, and Savage. I was surprised to see this so early in the first hour. <laughs> I'll yeah, I was, why. I, I was wondering why, too. I was like, this is weirdly time, because you would think a match like this would either be the first match on the show or the last match on the show. So to have it as the second match, it was kind of weird, but it feels like this was just the backdrop for what would be one of the more iconic NWO sneak attacks. Macho Man, of course, going hard after Ric Flair. Uh, Macho points at Elizabeth. Rick goes outside to kiss her. What a heel. And Liz definitely looked shocked at the kiss. I don't know if you saw her face. They didn't do a close-up, but you could see. Yeah. she the was first not time we've seen them yeah. kiss? Think so. Oh, my. And then Mongo tags in. Oh, God. Takes a I'm always so Irish scared. Whip, falls to the outside through the middle of the ropes. <laughs> <sighs> Mongo being Mongo. Jimmy Hart comes screaming at a cameraman to come to the back. Then he starts screaming at everyone in the match to come to the back. Luger and Sting listen to him, head to the back. We see backstage Hall and Nash beating up wrestlers with baseball bats. And then the infamous scene of Rey Mysterio flying at Nash, Nash catching him, and then lawn darting him right into the trailer. And then (laughs) this this is a a part that gets forgotten almost when they escape through the limo and Macho Man's on the top. <laughs> that is hilarious. Macho, only Macho Man would do this. And we got it. We got to shout out Scotty Riggs, who's the biggest idiot ever, who runs out the trailer and is so shocked to see him Marcus Bagwell on the ground. He doesn't see the two men with actual baseball bats right in front of him. He's like, 
oh my god marcus what's going on and then he turns around and hall just blasts him with a garbage can right to the face just scotty scotty riggs may have sealed up the lvp for this episode oh, by his by coming out the trailer and being a complete a dumbass we gotta talk about this war zone scene that is backstage with a lot of wrestlers taken out including arn anderson uh, with the horseman checking on him woman says it's her time to show off her acting chops uh, crying she's... hysterically oh yeah uh, the ambulance has come uh ray mysterio cries to eddie and alex right that that he saw four of them quato quato it was quato what are you what is he talking about four what is four members what mongo of course pissed off says there's gonna be some justice <laughs> Chris Benoit, though, Chris Benoit's acting was on, on, he was visibly upset, crying. He was, he was, he was crying during this whole scene. Yes, they take off Rey Mysterio's mask. Alex Wright convinces Eddie to stay because he's got a match. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's important right now. Um, yeah, Benoit and Elizabeth are both trying to convey crying. And Mang, of course, picks a fight with someone who had nothing to do with this. Chris Benoit. <laughs> just talk, he was literally just talking tongue and gibberish. At, at, like he was just like, no man, why don't you talk all that with the people with the baseball bats? Would go get them. Not Maybe. Us. That would have been a good idea, but it was like it was like for once WCW was showing some bit of solidarity, and Mang was like, "I don't want any of this." <laughs> um, Brain tells Eric Bischoff, "Man to man, that he has neck injuries and nerve damage, and he's not going to do the show if he doesn't feel safe." So Brain walks off, and Eric says, "Do what you got to do," and then he asks Tony and Larry to help him for the rest of the show. Eric says the live crowd didn't see and couldn't see what was going on. And you could tell because they immediately start chanting boring. Boring. <laughs> like, when are we getting back to the action? There hasn't been no matches in the ring for a good 10 to 15 minutes. There's no Videotron so they can see what's going on at MGM uh, Studios. We get Flair and Woman get into the ambulance with Arn Anderson. And these cheap fucks. I mean, they're cheap. They only had two ambulances. There's four bodies. There's four bodies. Two. They ambulances. had another one there on the side that they weren't using. No, they they put the other two people in oh. that. They put they put Ray. I think they put Ray and Scotty Riggs in that one, and then they put Arn and Marcus Bagwell in one. So it was just like, man, Sting and Flair, you got to put your differences aside and help out your boys to the hospital. Very yeah, awkward to, with all of them in the same ambulance. Try not to get into any fights while uh, you go to the hospital. Woman, woman was uh, she was on point here. Her, her acting, even even she, if you if you notice when they were going into the uh, ambulance, she even got on, you know, started holding Marcus Bagwell's hand and started like praying. I was like, I was like, yo, woman is going in. She is selling this whole entire scene for me. But apparently, this yeah, scene she's so was concerned. She's so concerned. I mean, it's not like she's thrown hot coffee in people's eyes before or hit them with high heels to the face. Now she's concerned about people's health. Well, you know, you know, there's there's a line, and and she <laughs> never crossed that line. She usually throws something across the line, but she herself never crosses that line. So this was the line that she you can't turn back from. The NWO crossed the unforgivable line here. I think Bischoff should have called an audible there and maybe gotten on the mic and at least let the crowd know what was going on. Like that was a little awkward, and it gets even more awkward when there's a damn fireworks display. Somebody tell the fireworks guy, now's not the time, not tonight. But but what I what I've always heard about this scene was apparently uh, there was people like nearby from MGM Studio who thought this all was real. Oh, and they called an actual. Yeah, they called they called the actual cops. I heard the scene was so real that they they called the actual cops to come get involved here. This is this is like yo, this is like nineteen ninety six. 
this type of angle you didn't see all the time. Like you saw some backstage segments, but nothing like this. I think this stands out. And um, the only other one that stands out outside of this that happened like backstage was uh, when uh, Razor and Goldust fought into the snow at, in early 1996. We got to go to our standby matches because our real matches have been all messed up due to this. Yeah, we were oh. supposed to get Arn versus Giant for the World Heavyweight Championship. We were supposed to get Ray versus Eddie, which I was like, I was, that was the one I was most disappointed that we weren't getting first on this night. Yeah, come on. We'll get to that one day. We'll get to that. Yeah, I'm sure. So we got High Voltage, Robbie Rage, and Kenny Chaos, who are happy to get a chance and didn't give a shit about anything going on backstage with this. <laughs> They're just happy to get a match. They're facing the Steiner brothers. That's the bad news. They're facing the Steiners. Yeah. Rick Steiner looked distraught. Um, it took a lot longer than it should have, but Scott wins by dropping dude on his head. Some kind of falcon arrow pile driver. I don't I don't know what you call it. Uh, it's uh it's our uh, Brian Cage's drill claw. That's who he got it from. He got it from Scott, he got it from Scott Steiner. Yeah, we haven't seen it too much, probably for safety reasons. Um, I think he called it the Steiner screwdriver. Oof. Man. So, yeah, there's that. Anything yeah. on that? I, I thought this was a all right match. Uh, I, I I like Rick uh, being distracted with, uh, with what was going on backstage. And High Voltage is the uh, forefathers to Thigh Voltage, which is Nikita Lyons and Lash, Lash Legend. And Beautiful. NXT 2.0. Beautiful. And, and we should also note that there is rumors that the Steiner brothers could be entering the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Either either it's going to be the Steiner brothers together. That's if Scott Steiner wants to get, you know, uh, put his grudge against WWE aside for once to get inducted. And if, if not, if he doesn't want to let that grudge aside, it's going to be Rick Steiner on his own in the Hall of Fame. Hmm. Uh, remind me of what they tried to do with the Hardys. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Put them together, please. Yes. And if you can't, don't bother. Keep waiting. Another standby match. Big Bubba will uh, take Rey Mysterio's place versus Eddie Guerrero. Uh, I thought Bubba has been an annoying prick here on Nitro, and Eddie has been a likable babyface. So this was a nice matchup in that sense with no build. But this was a long beatdown of Eddie. Too much offense for Bubba. Match ends with Jimmy Hart trying to hand Bubba his megaphone to use behind the ref's back, but a shitty throw by Jimmy, an even shittier catch by Bubba, who goes under his legs, and Eddie surprises him with a sunset flip and roll up for the win. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Hart is all razzle-dazzled earlier in the six-man tag. That man was moving around like he caught the Holy Ghost at a at the at a Baptist church. Uh, but and then here he just bobbles it and uh throw mistimes the throw to uh Big Bubba. So yeah, Eddie gets the win. I'm happy about that. This felt a little bit long in the tooth, but they were trying to fill in time for a lot of the other stuff that they had planned on this show. It's it, it, They really made this feel like this NWO attack wasn't planned because of how mismatched the whole rest of the show was. And they did note on commentary that the national news called WCW to find out about the incident. And I have in my notes, you know, it's so insane how well this got over. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. By the New World Order. And this segment, my goodness, it's beautifully shot. It's like an acid trip at points. It's a lot of taunting, a lot of talking trash, um, evil, evil laughing by Hulk Hogan. But well done. I liked it. Uh, not taking WCW seriously at all, teasing a fourth member, all promoting their, their matches at Hogwild. Everything about this was perfect. Maybe it was a little too long, but still, I love this. And we're going to see a lot more of this. This was the first of its kind. 
the personification of cool. This was just, this just felt so cool. And it, I just wrote my nose. No wonder the, the NWO got over so quickly and so over with the fans that they liked them because they were so different. They were so unique. They were just cool. That was the biggest thing. And I did catch, because uh, always a note that uh, Nash and Hall always talk about when they talk about the original vignettes for the NWO is how Hogan kind of had to get used to be working with the NWO where they are talking like you know they're normal human beings they're normal voices you got Hogan who says the line you know billionaire Ted with all of Ted's horses and all of Ted's men you're not gonna be able to put the WCW back together again I was just like Hogan Lay off the steroids, get off the, the Jamba juice, whatever you're doing, and get, get into this cool vibe that Hall and Nash have. They are just exuding cool. It's rubbing off on Hogan, but very, very slowly. Bischoff has left to the hospital. I thought they were going to say that Bischoff had left because he was pissed off that an NWO promo played. That that's what I thought. I was like, that would have worked very well. That yeah. uh, he went backstage to the production shop to find out how that got pissed. through. Yeah. yeah, they replay everything that happened earlier and how it started, and we get to Greg the Hammer Valentine taking Arn Anderson's place versus the Giants for the WCW Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, he gets a title shot out of it. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> not much here. Giant wins with two choke slams. The crowd loves it. Look at the guy in the front row with the, holding up the arm. He wants to be like a giant. And then a giant promo with Mean Gene. First starts by imitating the old Hulk Hogan promo. Says he wants people to realize how easy it is to fall into the con trap. Says Hogan didn't believe his own things he would preach. While he's making movies, the giant is here defending the title with honor. Says if WCW doesn't hang together, they all will... Hang separately. Sheesh, it's a bit dark. <laughs> For real. I was oh, wait, just like... worse. He's got a choke slam noose that he's gonna fit around Hogan's neck. Ah, oh, dark. Was like a, I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, you kind of crossed the line here. Uh, but yeah, Jimmy Hart and the giant promised to take out Hogan at Hog Wild. So this was an effective promo that got a little dark towards the end. And they end the show. By showing Rey Mysterio getting lawn darted one last time. They even pause it at the still shot at the end. Come on, that's fucked up. Rey Mysterio's that, in the hospital. That man has a broken neck. He had to take off his mask, which goes against his heritage and his culture. And all you're doing is just replaying the lawn dart at the end. Match of the night. Not much to choose from here. So six man tag. Yeah, horseman. Even got messed up. Yeah, Horseman versus Savage thing and Luger. Because that had a frenetic pace. There was like a crazy brawl at the beginning. So it instantly got you into everything. You wanted to see if Macho Man was going to get his hands on Ric Flair. So they had a simple story to follow. It just, yeah, got broken up by Jimmy Hart catching the Holy Ghost. And uh, <laughs> warning everybody about the NWO. MVP, the new world order. I went specific here and I went with the Outsiders. Because like I said, Hogan... <laughs> Still isn't isn't exuding the cool that Scott Hall and Kevin Nash have, so I give it to just the outsiders here. LVP, I'll go with Mike Enos. LVP, I went with Scotty Riggs because Dummy came out the trailer, doesn't even try to attack the guy or or defend himself against the guys with the bats. He's looking at Marcus Bagwell like, "Oh no, what happened to you?" We'll put our thumbs out. And three, two, one will be thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down for this nitro. Three, two, one. Thumbs up for me. Thumbs in the middle for me. I went thumbs in the middle only because there wasn't much wrestling on the show. It was all about one angle and the uh, the paid announcement by the New World Order, which were all great. So that's why it gets a thumbs in the middle. But nothing else much for me to talk about in a two-hour program. It's not a thumbs up for me. I just thought the angle was so good, so different, that it made the show. Just that that alone. Um, yeah. Let's move over to Monday Night Raw, taped 
from Seattle. I have two notes here before we get into the actual show. What's going on in the in the WWF universe at the time? First, from the Wrestling Observer newsletter, both of them. Yokozuna hasn't lost any weight at the Duke University weight loss clinic he's been at, and instead, Dave says he looks like he ate most of Duke University. <laughs> Why is Dave so mean? Oh, come on, Dave. That was uncalled for. Dave Meltzer. Uncle Dave Meltzer. What a joke. Also, sometimes. make a difference fat too. Remember him? Yes. He's been told to lose a lot of weight and shave his head. Well, what is with this shaving this head everybody gets hmm. requested to do? He is likely to be given a new gimmick as a Middle Eastern character. Likely with the Iron Sheik as his manager. Where it is, they are expected to be given a major heel push in order to get heat because there have been so many Middle Eastern terrorist activities in the news lately, and WWF wants to capitalize. Of course. And they say Dave didn't have accurate reports <laughs> back in the day. See? Right there. The Sultan. The Sultan is teased in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. And this wasn't done on purpose, but um, I've just named... Two people that are related in the same family, Yokozuna, Fatu, and they were both told to change their gimmicks <laughs> to be to be heels. Not planned. I didn't plan that. <laughs> Gotta love it. Justin Hawk Bradshaw versus Psycho Sid. Sid gets a huge reaction from the crowd. I have that in my notes too. Like I was like, "Yo, this crowd is going insane for Sid." Sid with a choke slam, but Bradshaw gets DQ'd for using the cowbell. He and Uncle Zeb try to double team Sid. Sid unsuccessfully. And Sid with a power bomb to Bradshaw. And then a power bomb <laughs> to Uncle Zeb. Dutch. Uncle Dutch taking the power bomb. What was going to your mind when you saw this? I was like, I was like, no, not to Dutch. You're gonna break his back. What are you doing? Oh man, but I had to remember that was two, this was 25 years ago. Dutch is not, you know, Grandpa Dutch that we know nowadays. That I that I talk to every Friday night. He he was a little a little younger back then. He could take that, but man, Sid is over as a as a baby face, and I don't think WWF expected him to be this over, considering. This man was just in the company as a heel like six months ago. Yeah. It's like he took Ultimate Warrior's place and now he's getting Ultimate Warrior's pops. Pretty much, yeah. Sonny with Farouk Assad, the modern day gladiator. At SummerSlam, it'll be Ahmed Johnson versus Farouk for the Intercontinental Championship. Farouk tells Ahmed, don't call him brother. He's not his brother, guy. <laughs> That's not how we do it in the streets. You should know. <laughs> uh, Farouk getting a little promo time here. He's definitely he comes across very intimidating. It just needs a different outfit. That's for damn sure. From the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Ahmed Johnson reportedly suffered some sort of kidney injury during the angle with Farouk. Dave has heard a ruptured kidney or just a severely bruised kidney. But regardless, Johnson has blood in his urine, and they don't exactly know what happened. He also suffered a broken nose uh, from an errant Owen Hart kick. He's expected to be out for a few weeks. And I said that. I said that last week when we were watching the show, that that kick, that kick looked like it probably uh, hurt his kick knees. <laughs> and then when they replayed it again, are you okay? Uh, when they replayed it again during this episode, I was like, yeah, that definitely hurt. That definitely injured his kidneys. We have 2022 WWE Hall of Famer Vader versus Mark Merrow. We hey, we, we've seen two. We've seen two out of the, the possible three uh, members. That means we've seen the whole class of two, 2022 in this episode of Monday Night Raw so far. Well, between both oh. shows, we I feel like we've seen four members, the four <laughs> possible members. Either it's two people that have been rumored to be in the Hall of Fame right. in the Steiner brothers and Psycho Sid, and then we got Vader here, and then we're going to get The Undertaker in the main event. A lot of Hall of Famers between both these rosters. Uh, we learned there will be a Raw Invitational Battle Royal next week. The winner takes on the WWF champion on the Raw after SummerSlam, which I thought was a bit weird. 
just a little bit. Vader wins after Meryl jumps off the top rope and he catches him into a power slam. Then we get an in-ring promo with Cornette, Vince, and Jose Lothario. Jim warns Jose. He's watching him not to pull out that switchblade again like he did at In Your House. <laughs> <laughs> Rips Jose a new one, saying he's a has-been. He needs Shawn Michaels to be relevant. Jose grabs him. Says, don't talk about his family or Sean because he's going to kick his butt. Cornette tries to attack, attack him but gets punched by Jose, who squares up. Backstage, Mankind has the mandible claw on like, some jabroni. I'm like, wait, no, wait, that's Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't recognize who this was. I thought this was like right to censor Stevie Richards, the way Shawn is dressed. <laughs> I could not recognize him for nothing. Yeah, the short sleeve white shirt does not scream heartbreak kid <laughs> at all. But yeah, mankind uh starting to build up early for, for mind games in your house mind games. I, I didn't remember that he attacked him this early. Mankind was a busy dude during oh. this episode of Monday Night Raw. He was. And from the Wrestling Observer newsletter, the in your house pay-per-view after SummerSlam will happen in September, and the planned main event right now. Is a tag team match with Shawn Michaels and Jose Lothario versus Davey Boy Smith and Jim Cornette. Dave Meltzer is less than enthused. I, I'm, yeah. I'm glad he was less than enthused because hopefully that led to them changing their mind here. Because I'm just confused. Like, why is it not Vader and Jim Cornette? If if you are gonna do this tag match, yeah, wouldn't it make sense to be Vader and Jim Cornette coming out of SummerSlam? Yeah. On superstars, Aldo Montoya. Beat Jer Jerry the King Lawler, dedicated his match to Jacob Snake, and won by DDT. Jerry wants a rematch. He says the only reason he lost was because, okay, bear with me, folks. The only reason he lost was because Aldo is Jake's designated driver, and he was reeking of alcohol from being next to Jake. So he got a little woozy from the intoxicating fumes. Actual Jerry the King Lawler uh, explanation here. Wow. Wow, a direct <laughs> quote, ladies and gentlemen. That was a direct quote. We get the Bulldog versus Henry Godwin. Owen on commentary. There's a nice WCW sign in the crowd. Washed up crying wimps. <laughs> Very nice. We we should also mention that Aldo Montoya uh, accepted the challenge of Jerry King Lawler for next week. Yes. Owen was pretty calm on commentary until Vince McMahon asked him, when are we going to see Bret Hart again? <laughs> Owen loses it. Rips Bret Hart a new one. He's tired of everyone asking about Bret Hart to him. Like, how would you feel if you just show up and everybody's asking about your brother? Like, you're there with a broken arm. You're there every week. Your brother decides to go on a six-month vacation, and everybody's worried about him. No one's asking, like, how's your arm? When's your arm going to feel better? No. Where's Brett? Like, what? I would feel the same way as Owen Hart. Mad respect to Owen. I love him. It'd be like asking me, where's drunk guy JJ? When, when's he going to be back? Do you know when he's going to be back? <laughs> do you, Who do cares you? about him? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you, do you know when he's not going to be drunk and when he'll show up to True Rewind? Like, no, who cares? Owen knocks over the bucket of slop, distracting Henry Godwin, and Bulldog wins with the power slam. The bucket of slop looks like coleslaw, some weak old coleslaw, <laughs> but still some coleslaw. We were also uh, informed that the British Bulldog will face Psycho Sid at SummerSlam, as well as Owen Hart versus Savio Vega at the event as well. Um, I mean, they're, 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 they're putting matches on the SummerSlam card, but none of them really seem to be have any build. It feels like a random episode of Raw outside of the two top matches with the Boiler Room Brawl and the WWF title match. The WWF is proud sponsors of Olympic hopeful Mark Henry, who set a deadlift record of 903 pounds, the world's strongest man. That's a, there's a lot of beef on that ham hock. Um, and we also got the replay of uh, his previous interaction with Jerry the King Lawler back in March. So this is only the second time we are seeing Mark Henry and ladies and gentlemen, it would take 15 years, 15 years before they paid off on this push. Damn. <laughs> uh, we see a segment from In Your House International Incident. Take it away. 
Yes, we uh, see we see footage of international incidents uh, with the whole interaction with mankind getting involved in the Undertaker versus Goldust matchup. We then get the brawl that went to the boiler room and they hype up Taker versus mankind in the boiler room brawl at SummerSlam. And then we go to mankind following international incident. He's there with Goldust and Marlena. Goldust laying provocatively on a on a boiler i guess i don't know um and mankind says i think the dead man is a very bad man mommy i can tolerate what he tries to do to me but not when it comes to maternal love you see undertaker mommy doesn't want you to hurt her anymore and what mommy wants, her little boy provides. And then he said a lot of gibberish that I could not understand. Neither could the closed capturing. Because I, I replayed this a couple of times and closed caption just had in indescribable or uh, yeah, nondescript. That was what they told me. So I tried to get this promo as many times <laughs> as possible. Just didn't work. Uh, he then continued on. Not destruction. I can't control my feelings anymore. I get very angry. The dead man will find out that destruction can be can be so beautiful. 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 And yes, folks, uh, the mommy he is referencing is in fact gold. <laughs> Time for the main event, Undertaker versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. And Taker's going for the tombstone when Mankind walks down the aisle from the boiler room, which he was showing we, at earlier. Yeah, we see him in the boiler room earlier, and he's just saying he feels the Reaper. And then before the commercial break, we see Mankind leaving the boiler room and heading to the ring. Undertaker and Mankind brawl while the ref counts a countout. Uh, th thank you thank you because i was so confused i was like i was like like literally i've seen this before i've seen wwe do this plenty of times throughout the last 25 years since this happened and every single time they do it it's the person in the match gets all the offense on the person that's not in the match because they don't want to call a disqualification in this instant mankind was the first one to throw a punch and he landed so I don't understand how this wasn't an immediate disqualification. They do this so that they can announce that Stone Cold Steve Austin is the winner, which was a joke. A joke. Sorry, Steve, if you're watching. Sorry, Steve. Yes, we apologize. Taker comes back in the ring and delivers a tombstone for good measure to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, you, like, you, like this is this is how they're treating their king of the ring. He gets a cheap victory, a cheap, a cheap victory that he one hundred percent should have lost by disqualification. And then he, and then Taker comes out after brawling with another man and just immediately just make sure that you remember he could have won this very, very easily. By the way, also from the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer was in attendance for a house show and said Steve Austin was getting top star treatment from the crowd the fans they were they were cheering for him like he was a top star despite wrestling on the lower card against you know savio vega say there you go there we go they, they, they put the fans are the people that are the going to be the ones that kind of rally behind them this it's going to take it's slower see and we said this when we watched king of the ring for folks that you know probably didn't follow us before we were on Fight for Overbook, check out the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. The the links for our playlists are always in the description. You can check out our our review of King of the Ring, and we always we said then that WWE likes to pretend that it was the <laughs> Austin 316 promo, and then immediately skyrocket straight to the top. He was in main event matches and whatnot. Yes, he was in the main event here, but we see how he was treated here, and we've seen how he's been treated the last couple of weeks. First with the busted lip, they did one filming of Monday Night Raw for the whole entire month, so he couldn't wrestle then. 
He was off camera for a while. He had the match at, you know, International Incident, and then he's here against The Undertaker, but he's not being treated like a top star. It's really the fans that kind of do this groundswell of support towards Stone Cold that really, and then really the catalyst is the Bret Hart feud that is coming and that we already got teases of a little bit. I believe last week when he was on commentary, when he talked about Bret Hart, that's the little teases. That feud is what really catapults Austin to, to the stratosphere. Vince tries to interview Paul Bear after, but Undertaker takes the mic. You got what he said? Yes, I do. It's very quick. Mankind. It's time. The Reaper enters the Serpent's Lair at SummerSlam. The Boiler Room Brawl. You will finally rest in peace. <laughs> Good line from Undertaker. It's time the Reaper enters the Serpent's Lair. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Thank goodness he's alive. That hurt my eyes. I did it too <laughs> long. <laughs> Match of the night. Undertaker Stone Cold. I mean, I guess by default. Yeah. By, like both both shows, it was by default who was the match of the night because it really wasn't about the wrestling on either show. But yeah, Austin and Taker can take it. Yeah. MVP, I got two. I'll give it to Mankind and Sid. I, I gave it to Mankind. I mean, Mankind dropped the WWF champion. He got involved in the main event, uh, cost The Undertaker his matchup, had the promo from International Incident. Mankind was all over this show, so he has to be the MVP. LVP, I will give to Aldo Montoya. I just didn't like how he cut a goofy response to Jerry Lawler. He didn't look comfortable. Hey, hey that was that was that was less um what what was his name? The Portuguese man of war. Yeah. And he looked more like he can be someday just incredible. Someday, not today. Someday. <laughs> I went with LVP, uh, Justin Hawk Brashaw. He got himself disqualified and couldn't even get any lick of offense. And he got poor Dutch power bomb. So <laughs> Brashaw is the LVP. We'll put our thumbs out in three, two, one. Thumbs up, thumbs middle, or thumbs down for all. Three, two, one. Thumbs down for both of us. Indeed, yeah. I mean, I, I wanted to give this at least the thumbs in the middle because I did like the fact that I got a Mankind and an Undertaker promo. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever Raw does that, and it, it they also give me a Goldust promo, uh, that's a thumbs up show for me usually. But, you know, the Mankind promo, it was a lot of gibberish that I couldn't understand. The Undertaker promo was too short, and there really wasn't any wrestling on this show, so... I can't, I can't in good conscience give this anything other than a thumbs down. The ratings war last week, Nitro won 2.6 to 2.2. What do you think happened this week? Who do you think won? <laughs> well, you already know who won. <laughs> it's it's definitely Nitro. Definitely Nitro. I think they did like a 3.5. 3.1. What do you think Raw did? They What did they do last week? 2.2. 2.3. 2.1. So 3.1 to 2.1. Nitro's won seven times in a row. They're up 24 to 17 to two. Uh, two ties. And on the true rewind scoreboard, we both agree Nitro is better. So Nitro is up 26 to 17 in our viewings. And that's the only ratings that really matter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's who quality. was the better, the better show quality wise. So, but we want to hear from all of you. If you're watching us on the premiere, let us know in the live chat what you thought was the better show between what we reviewed, or if you saw it yourself. If you watched us, if you're watching this on demand, let us know in the comments down below what you thought was the better show. Also, we want to hear what was your what's your favorite Scott Hall moment? Uh, we saw Scott Hall on this uh one of my favorite moments is a lot of these paid paid announcements by the nwo because like i said it just personifies cool but let me know is it a razor ramon moment an nwo moment let us know in the comments down below 
And of course, like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe if you are new to the Fightful Overbooked YouTube channel. And Romeo, let the people know where they can find you. Hey, True Hill Romeo, Twitter and Instagram, over on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. A couple of things going along. Uh, Monday Night Raw, watch along. Well, that's Undertaker. Hey, Raider Raw Superstars, number 40. <laughs> Will Cody Rhodes be there in Jacksonville? We'll be watching live. And Tuesday night, we review NXT, NX3, number 49, after NXT is over. And Wednesday, AEW Dynamite, watch along. St. Patrick's Day Slam, join us for that. Look at all that great content over there. You can find me on the Twitter machine at True Hill SP3. You can find me on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel on Thursday, uh, reviewing AEW Dynamite with Jimmy Macaram on AE Ramble. I'm also going to be here on the Fightful Overbook YouTube channel on Thursday with my boy, Will Washington, a man that is so great in the wrestling media world great i'm gonna have a great time reviewing aew dynamite for you all fine folks of the subscribers of the fightful overbook youtube channel so let's join us for day after dynamite two dads on dad it's gonna be a great episode there of course on friday you can see me friday morning 8 30 a.m with jeremy lambert on fmc friday morning coffee as well as with steven jensen on degrassi dude so Plenty of great content on the Fightful Overbook YouTube channel. And then back over on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, True Hill Heat 167, Saturday, 11.05 a.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, check out the previous episode, True Hill Heat 166, with special guest and now newest member of the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, Stephanie Hypes. It was an hilarious episode. Plenty of great content. And one of the best segments in True Hill Heat history, courtesy of of this man right here, as the Cody verse turns, the combination <laughs> of his visuals and music background with my AS ASMR voice. <laughs> Magical stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. True Hill Heat 166 right now on the YouTube channel. And yeah, we will be back here next week. True Rewind episode 71, reviewing uh, the Go Home Show for WCW Nitro as they head into Hog Wild, reviewing another episode of WWF Raw. And then True Rewind episode 72, we're going to be reviewing Hog Wild. So we got great content on on the horizon right here on true rewind so it's a great time to like this video share it with your friends let us know in the comments down below your favorite scott hall moment and of course hit the subscribe button for more content from fightful overbooked so for romeo for lost in 1986 drunk guy jj it is me it is me your true hill phenom sp3 this has been true rewind to episode 70 paid for by the new world order and we are signing off until next time one more for the good guys hey